Hello again, and welcome to Celebrating Act Two, where Art Kirsch and I are with the lovely Dr. Liz Lister, talking about everything important in our bodies and our health. Dr. Liz, great to see you again. Likewise, thank you so much. I have a question, uh, Dr. Liz. Um, I'm very fortunate I have a good uh, uh, medical plan uh, in addition to uh, Medicare. And um, I see my uh, general practitioner, that's what I call him, the family doctor, uh, twice a year. And uh, just a week before each one, they happen to have a lab that's in the same building. I go in and I give some blood, I give some urine. Um, actually, I think the urine I only give once a year, don't know why. Uh, and then they pull some blood out and they put it into separate little bottles and I guess they're gonna do different things with it. Uh, are these, uh, is this just the way it is or are there different ways to, to, get, to have tests taken? Uh, and what do they decide to do with all these different blood samples? Oh, and by the way, I've never had yeah. a stool sample because I have a colonoscopy every three or four years. So uh, they don't, uh, no more stool samples. Thank you. Gotcha. That's right. There are a lot of different ways. There's also saliva testing that can be done. Mm. So we talked, we when we've already mentioned blood, urine, stool testing, saliva testing, a lot of different ways to do this kind of testing. Uh, but those are the common ones for sure. Uh, blood and urine, as you mentioned, being the very most common. Uh, so there's different ways to test different things that we're looking for. Blood is easy. As you said, you go in, you get the blood draw. For a lot of people, it's not so easy from a mental standpoint. Very upsetting, really hate the needles. So if you can check more with urine, that of course, does. there's zero pain involved but a little bit more trouble. There's a lot of dried urine testing now that is being done, especially for hormone testing. However, there's a little more to it. So again, blood testing is still the most common way. It's definitely the most common language, if you will, that doctors are used to. So I'm glad that you're getting routine surveillance. That's important. <laughs> it's also important that it be taken in conjunction with how you're feeling. I think that testing is very important. And I think that symptoms are even more important. It's great to do the testing. It's important to know if your level is here or here, but the goal isn't to get your level to go from here to here. It's to get your symptoms to clear up and to have you feeling good, as well as, of course, clearing up whatever the underlying cause is of whatever symptoms you're having. So it sounds like you're getting screening tests to check for things that before they have symptoms, which is fantastic. So we wanna do all of the above. You know, it's kind of interesting when, um, uh, when I uh, have these uh, semi-annual visits, uh, he's got everything on a computer now, which he used to curse when they were switching over to it. And he says they don't even have a decent program, but <laughs> but at least when he brings it up now, he's got like eight or 10 years worth of data and he can see changes over time. And uh, for me, because uh, uh, I uh, have, uh, I'm treated for high blood pressure and, and uh, he doesn't treat me for being overweight, but he can see that as my weight goes up and down, you can see the results of the blood tests. Uh, as well, right. and and uh, so he's got <laughs> great baseline to see. Wait, has something changed uh, directly? So that gives me great peace of mind uh, when I go in there, and he can say, hey, "You know what? This has ticked up a little bit, and we don't have to worry about it yet." But you need to go back and maybe lose a few more pounds, or uh, uh, eat this kind of food, or something like that. So for me, it's very, very, right. and I don't, I don't mind the blood draw at all. Uh, <laughs> as a matter of fact, it's easy because. It just, once they stick you, they get enough blood to do all the tests he wants to do. That's uh, right. That's yeah. right. Yeah, that's fantastic. That's really good. Couple of pitfalls that I always like to caution people against. One is what that I use in quotation marks, the normal range. And we've definitely talked about this in past segments where the range might be one to 20 and 
optimal is 20 and your level is two, and they tell you, oh, congratulations, you're in the normal range. That's not correct. You're in the reference range. Mm. Not the normal, not where it, and definitely not necessarily in optimal. Yeah. So I want our audience to really keep that in mind, be educated about that. Keep that in mind. If you're not feeling good, but your doctor says your tests are normal, you really want to compare. I have seen this recently a lot with men and testosterone levels. Yep. The range is from 300 to 1,000. And the level was literally 320. And he was told it was in the normal range. And he was having symptoms of low testosterone. Yeah. So that's very important. And I want our audience to keep that in mind and advocate for yourself. Well, you know, you bring up a good point, And that is uh, that, first of all, it's a reference range. And that we need to, as patients, we need to be, I guess the word is proactive and be able That's to right. discuss our symptoms. You know, we we don't know whether the way I feel is good or bad necessarily, but we need to discuss mm -hmm. it with the doctor and use that and compare the symptoms com in comparison with the lab tests, the range of the lab tests. And I, I, it sounds to me like the proactivity of, because I know, for instance, when I go to my doctor, like, as uh, Art does for the regular checkups, um, it, you know, his first question is, how do you feel? And, you know, I, I remember right. uh, talking good. to little folks on the street, oh, I'm fine. You know, but that's not what you have to do. You have to say, <laughs> that's well, right. I've been feeling this. I had a such and such a couple of weeks ago. What do you think? And that will give the doctor the what the information. The information. That's right. That's to exactly decide right. whether he needs a test. That's right. Yeah. Also, my my doctor uh, uh, on the two or three things that are not in range, uh, he says. So this this thinking on this is not just is it a number, but how does it interact with all the other things that you had. This was terrible, and this was right. terrible, and that was terrible. Then this probably sucks. But yeah. all these things are really tight, and they're good, and well within the reference range, or they would call it the range. He said, "I'm right. not too worried about it because it's consistent over time." That's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes you can have levels that are outside the range, and it's not a problem. It can be something that varies all the time. There are a lot of things on the regular chemistry panel that are literally changing every time we breathe, which is, of course, hopefully on a regular basis. <laughs> <laughs> and so it does not necessarily mean anything bad by the same token if something is outside the range. But yeah. it's just important to advocate for yourself. Again, the way I look at it is symptoms are priority number one. Blood tests are second place to how are you feeling? John, to your point, the way I've heard it presented that I really like is two questions. One is, how are you? And the second question is, how are you really? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So be prepared when you go to your doctor with the answer, your answers to the question, yeah. the second question, how are you really? Yeah. Well, you know, uh, one last thought, and that is with current medicine, being so much online. Uh, I have, every time I have a doctor's appointment, it's the, do you want to do it on a video visit or do you want to come into the office? Sometimes they don't give you that option. You know, they love their video, right. video visits. But with that being, you know, we, we're heading more towards doing a Skype call to my doctor. The right. lab tests become even more important. Um, you know, you have to, sometimes you, you run a video call and you can't think of everything. That's and right. So I think the lab tests are really important. It's great to have your analysis, your view of that.
For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.